Commission rates are a relevant subject in the real estate brokerage world. Which company is offering what in terms of percentage? My view on this, and has been since I've been in Dubai, is that it's one very small part of the overall recipe that can determine whether you're going to be successful in Dubai or not. Many companies have, you know, got high commission rates, you know, very high commission rates, and that's the the, the USP that is used to try and obviously attract top quality brokers. You could earn you know, 90% commission. But if it's on half the gross revenue, then what difference does it really make? You've got to look at how much gross revenue you're going to put on the board in the first place before you then consider what your, you know, the relevance of your commission rate. So I would rather be at a company that paid me, you know, 40, 50, 60% commission, where I'm fully supported, where I get to put the maximum amount of revenue on the board, rather than being at a company that pays me 90% commission, for example, but it's really difficult to get into the six yard box with my client because I get bogged down with everything else that goes on in running a successful real estate brokerage. You're effectively left to do that yourself. What we do is we try and make sure that we know that real estate brokers are very good at certain things, and they don't want to get bogged down with other things that might not come as naturally to them. For example, Roberto and Arter, they've, they've, they've all been doing this job a long time, very experienced, very successful. They don't have to get involved in understanding the way to position their listings. They don't have to, can, there's a frictionless process for getting photography done on their properties. They don't have to do any administrative work. They don't have to deal with any of the conveyancing. So as soon as they sign the deal off, they know that there's a whole team of four people in a conveyancing company, in our conveyancing team, sorry, that, that will run the transaction. The accounts team, the marketing budget, they don't have to decide when should they and when shouldn't they be spending on marketing. When do they need leads forecasting, when they might feel like they need leads. There's just an endless supply of leads always there, always available for them. Now, if we were to put them on ridiculously high commission packages, there wouldn't be any money left in the pot in order to deliver them that additional level of service, which is necessary in order to leverage them into more transactions. So it's all about allocation of resource. And our job as a business is to spend a lot of time trying to work out what's the most efficient way to allocate that resource, what people infrastructure is needed in this business to, to leverage someone like Arter or someone like Roberto up to the top of the game. You know, for, for the secondary market, I think, it's, um, I think it's been proven that the companies that stay away from the high commission model have become more prominent over time and the, and, and the high percentage model have become less prominent over time. Because I don't think it's scalable. I don't think it's scalable. I think you can have a little boutique company that does all right with it. You know, and individual brokers can do okay, but I, do they make more in that setup than they would in a setup where they were earning less percentage but getting more support? Net terms, probably not. They probably get more in one pocket, but then they've got to pay their own marketing budget out of the other pocket. And they probably spend that money in a less efficient way. They're probably less effective at spending that money. And therefore, you know, it's a, a misallocation of their resource. So net terms, they probably don't do any better.